welcome or welcome back to Watch Advice on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and today I'm welcoming you from the Valle de Joux, to be precise, from Le Sentier. And where are we? It's written here behind. We are filming at Bulgari today, and the purpose of this video is to show you how these ultra, ultra, ultra thin watches are manufactured. And we are going to show you how the movements are being assembled. The movements are assembled here in the Vallée de Joux at Bulgari. And tomorrow, that will be tomorrow, we are going to be at the headquarter in Neuchâtel. And at Neuchâtel, we will then show you how the movements are being assembled with the cases. And the case production, this will be later on. We will have the occasion to come back to Bulgari later on this year and to film the case production and the bracelet production. So you will see the entire process of manufacturing one of these wonderful Octo Finissimo watches. <music> Every decade in the watch industry has an iconic design, it brings out an iconic design. And I have to say, the decade actually is Octo Finissimo, because there is one iconic design and I don't see any other watch that has been produced recently that is so iconic as the Octo Finissimo. The purpose of this video is to show you more about the insights and the background, how these watches are manufactured. So enjoy, lots to discover, have fun. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. So well, at Bulgari the assembly of movements is organized differently since a couple of years because in the past Bulgari had not so many different movements or calibers and what happened is that they had a semi-automatic assembly lines where one movement would be assembled by different persons doing one step after the other step. But now they have more movements, more choice. They are not manufacturing less movements than they did in the past but they do it differently and it is the case that one watchmaker is assembling the movement entirely and then a colleague is doing the regulation of the watch. So the flow is differently organized, makes sense because the choice is different of course. You know that in the Finissimo series you have the single automatic, then you do have chronographs, you do have minute repeaters, the variety is big. You have a tourbillon, but tourbillons are not done here, they are done in a separate atelier, we will go there. But the thing is to understand that one watchmaker assembles the entire movement. You see he is putting part of the gear train in there. Things we saw this morning being manufactured after they have been decorated, washed, everything is ready. So they come and then, yeah, part by part, the movement is assembled. And once it is fully assembled, the colleague, we will film him just in a few seconds, will then do the necessary regulations of uh, these calibers. This is the simple, simple. It's not simple, it's a very complicated caliber since I already told you it is so thin and the parts are so tiny that I have immense respect <laughs> that these people working on those even see the parts they are putting in those uh, movements. In this case, it's the Octo Finissimo, the BL138 caliber that is being assembled, the base caliber of the series with a small second, minutes and hours. So in these see-through boxes are screws and the screws are necessary, of course, because what will happen now, you have bridges that are on this little plate. He has just been positioning different wheels of the gear train. And of course, if he wouldn't fix them in the movement with the bridge that he is now pre-oiling, he's putting some oil on the stones where the axes are then held. If he wouldn't use the bridges and if you would turn around the movement, all the parts he has just been putting in there, wheels, gear train, the barrel, etc., they would just fall out. So you need something to put on top. He was positioning the bridge correctly. He's now checking if everything is there where it should be. What happens now on your screen is the most thrilling moment for every watchmaker. This is integrating the escapement into the movement and when he is giving that little swing to the balance wheel and the watch starts to tick, it's like the birth of a movement and it is a scene that I very much like and it is, yeah, by coincidence, we were just attending this moment 
and we had the chance to see when the watchmaker is assembling the escapement and really giving an initial swing to the balance wheel and the watch starts to tick. What will be next is that he will take that fully assembled caliber, the 138, and put it on one of these Vichy testers and he will start then to regulate the watch. Now you are asking yourself how precise or how accurate are Bulgari watches in that size. Please always think about that we are talking about ultra, ultra thin watches. We are talking about a species of watches that other rules apply. The bigger the watch is, the easier it is to regulate, the more precise it will also end of the day show the time. So these watches are regulated in between minus one and plus 11 seconds and recontrolled once the movement is being assembled in the case. So here we are in Le Sentier in the Vallée de Joux. This is where the movements are manufactured and they then go down to Neuchâtel where they are being encased and again then there is a control done of course if the setting or if the regulation he has done here is still actual. So double control and regulating a movement in between minus one and plus 10, 11 seconds is not bad if you're now thinking, wow, what's this? Just think back, the old Omega Speedmaster Caliber 1861, the old one, I'm not talking about the 3861 that is now METAS certified, I'm talking about the old one, had no better accuracy. So we were in between minus one and plus 10, 11 seconds. And this type of movement made it finally to the moon and was good enough for American astronauts to have an accurate timepiece on their wrists. So it is a standard being still used today for ultra flat movements and for a variety of other movements that are not COSC certified. You know COSC is minus four plus six seconds and of course other manufacturers today like Rolex or like Omega do better than this but that is a different type of movement and if you have been complaining in uh, some of the comments why Omega movements are so thick maybe have an answer now. So the thinner the thing is, the more complicated it gets and it has been tested on 48 hours, not 24 hours, it's been tested on 48 hours. So this is good enough and will yeah, deliver what you in the end expect from such a watch. So, well, what you see here is basically the same base caliber of the Bulgari 138. You have been seeing how it has been assembled and the same base is now also used to integrate a perpetual calendar. One of the watches or one of the watches in the Octo Finissimo series. Maybe you have seen our video that we taped earlier this year where we have been showing you all these world records. Just in case you have not seen them, have a look and you will be able to discover all the fully assembled watches, how they look like. And now, if you're watching this video, you can see how uh, the movements are manufactured. And once again, I can tell you something, since there are more parts integrated in this movement, the parts get even smaller. So it's almost incredible with what kind of small parts watchmakers are working when they are assembling these movements. Utmost respect, because assembling a huge movement, something, but assembling these uh, ultra thin movements is another, it's another league. And as you all know, there are not many watchmakers out there, not many companies offering such a variety of ultra thin watches and movements. And there's none who has been able to set so many records in the past as Bulgari did. We have to pass to the cherry on the cake today. I don't want to say anything negative about the perpetual calendar, that's the cherry on the cake, but this is really the cherry on the cake. It's the minute repeater, and this is the thinnest, yes, and most exciting minute repeater I have seen in my entire career so far. The smart thing here is that the dial is open, so instead of having indexes, they have been cutting out the indexes, and they are using this to amplify the sound. And this tiny little movement, 362, by the way, is an interesting thing also. Did you think about, I've been talking about the 138, uh, the 318, and now uh, 305, and now 362. 
they have been starting in initially naming those movements, considering the amounts of components they were uh, using to build them. But today it's obsolete because it has changed meanwhile, and uh, this is no longer indicating how many components you effectively have in the movement. But this is the minute repeater. It is the finished minute repeater. It's sounding amazing. It's a, a manual wound uh, movement. And yeah, you see the watchmaker here working on it. And it is really from A to Z assembled by the watchmaker who starts the project. It's a marvel. I always say you can talk about whatever you want, but manufacturing and assembling a minute repeater and to make it sound the way this Bulgari minute repeater sounds is really the cherry on the cake. Since in a minute repeater there are even more components than in a perpetual calendar, a chronograph, etc., etc. Since uh, the size of uh, the entire watch doesn't increase, the parts get smaller and it gets even more complicated. And I have utmost respect of these watchmakers that are able to assemble these movements and to adjust them and to make them sound, to make them tick. Uh, it's incredible. These parts are so tiny that, yeah, most of them, it's hard to distinguish them with your eyes when you are not using a magnifying glass. Yeah, in fact, we have been skipping some <laughs> parts of the assembly. And what you see here on your screen is a fully assembled minute repeater. The gongs, the hammers are there, everything you need. And the next step will be that the watchmaker starts to really regulate and uh, to find the perfect sound. This is a delicate thing because everything has to be considered, including, of course, the case itself. And only then you will really get the maximum sound possible out of such a tiny, tiny little movement. And I tell you, they sound great. So now a question for the experts. You have been hearing the movement chiming a certain time. What was it? So in the comment section, please let me know what you have been listening to. Was it 12 mm -hmm or 12 uh -huh? It's you now telling me, please, what the Bulgari movement has been chiming. Of course, extensive testing is done also at Bulgari. So they do not develop a new movement without testing it in here. And we are unfortunately not able to show you detailed testing because some of the watches left and right um, of me are watches that are only going to be shown to the public in 2023, so in next year. So novelties are being tested, extensively tested, and basically what is done in such an atelier or such a workshop is that they are artificially trying to simulate wearing cycles. So they simulate that the watch is worn for a year or more than a year and they do extensive testing with all parts that are moving on push pieces, crowns, winding, time setting, etc. etc. So extensive testing is done, but in this case it's a bit secret, so we can't show you all the details. Well, there is um, a sentence another brand uh, based in Germany uses and they say never stand still. That's used by Alange und Söhne, but I still have to say it's nothing else at any other brand. So never stand still is uh, the motto, bringing innovation to Calibres. And, and you just have seen me talking to Julien from the R&D department. It was launched in 2017, the Calibre 138. And since then, of course, they have been uh, collecting lots of, of feedback uh, coming from watchmakers by testing, etc., by people wearing the watch, and they are innovating. So there is a new version of the 138 now being actually sold. Some innovation has been done uh, with the automatic rotor. So now the winding is even better if you are a person that does not move so much. You have um, changes also in the escapement, uh, you have changes in stability on the entire movement. So it is never 
yet the last version you will see. And also, and this is good to know, uh, that with the perpetual calendar, also the new version of the 138, uh, the base caliber is used. And so they continue on doing progress and progress and progress. And it's not easy because you also have to imagine that in the field of ultra thin watches, they are almost standing or almost competing. They're not competing against anyone because there's only one competitor, if you want to put it that way, but they are still more or less alone. And it's, it's incredible what the success over the years brought to Bulgari, because no one, when they started to launch the Octo Finissimo, would have expected that this is such a success. And innovation won't stop. And I'm very curious to see what will be next. Innovation is there. There is much more to come. And uh, yeah, as long as Jean-Christophe Babin will be the CEO of this brand, um, they will never stop getting pushed, 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 pushed. Actually, the story is beautiful because Initially, we didn't shoot for world records. What we really wanted, uh, looking at the market and looking at the overall fashion, design, interior design environment, we wanted really a hugely elegant and contemporary watch matching uh, with the modern gentleman styling when it comes, for instance, to dressing, the slim fit, rather than minimalist modern design, uh, minimalist contemporary art. And we realized that there were no watches uh, really matching this new lifestyle of the 21st century. Hence, the idea to develop an ultra thin watch. Why? Because we want, as a jeweler, to bring to gentlemen through the watch the same elegance we bring to ladies through the jewelry. And uh, moving on, we discovered that we had to invent it because there was nothing on the market which could match, you know, that obsession for styling. And then when we got the first prototype in 2014, we were so close to the thinnest ever that we decided to go the extra mile uh, to get a record, but it was like uh, getting a goodie. And it worked. And so there was such a buzz, I remember, after this 2014 introduction, uh, because of the thinness, because of the look, but because also of the record, that obviously when moving on to uh, further develop it as a full collection with a uh, minutributor, perpetual calendar, chronograph, tourbillon, tourbillon chronograph, we decided that not only we should obviously capitalize on the shape, on the monochromatic look, but we should capitalize on the technology and make sure, if possible, that each and every single one would beat the record of its competing category. So the sinus chronograph, the sinus mini attributors, the sinus turbine, and so on. And we made it without any competitor ever challenging us and getting quicker than Bulgari on the market with a sinus chronograph, a sinus repeater, a sinus turbine, which has been quite a chance. Uh, so the, the, the only competitor is you uh, pushing your teams, t telling them to go yeah. So, uh, you, are the, you are the competitor. You know, I'm very competitive, see, you know. Uh, yeah, I know you for a long time. One decade ago, <laughs> I, I was really obsessively uh, pursuing the, the hundred of a second, the thousand of a second, the five, ten thousand of a second. So, know, know. you know, because the former brand had the DNA, which was very much about, you know, the yeah. uh, tiniest fractions of time. Obviously, in Bulgari, the tiniest fraction of times are not the name of the game. The name of the game is to contribute to people elegance through jewelry yeah. and through elegant watches. And so, instead of pursuing uh, milliseconds, yeah. I've decided uh, to pursue millimeters. <laughs> 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 this is why I said it. I know you for a long time, and I know that you're pushing. But, but it's know, good. This is what the brand needs. And, and you know, if there is no external competitor, then let's take the CEO to be the competitor. <laughs> After I have been welcoming you yesterday from the Valais de Joux, we are today at the Bulgari headquarter here in Neuchâtel. And it is here where the assembled movements are being delivered, the ready cases are being delivered, the bracelets, the hands, the dials, everything you need. And we are going to watch now how a Octo Finissimo is completely assembled. You will be able to follow it step by step and see how a watch is finished and also then at the end quality checked. So enjoy. The watchmaker actually is now uh, assembling the case or putting together all the rest of the watch. She just has put on the dial on the Calibre 138 of Bulgari. That's the automatic freehand movement with the micro rotor we saw the production yesterday. Everything is being delivered here in Neuchâtel, so she has everything she needs from A to Z. 
she will or she is additionally of course controlling several things if everything she is putting together fits perfectly if some parts need to be touched again mostly it's not the case so everything she gets has already been controlled of course so the dials have been controlled and all the other parts she is now assembling but of course she needs to do her little checks to be sure because once she does the final assembly of the movement it's done and if something isn't okay yeah then you start from scratch and this wouldn't be very efficient you see here she found obviously some dust or some little traces of maybe fingerprint or something she's working here in a special workplace the air has been pulled away the dust has been taken away by the air condition or by the special air condition you have and now next thing will be setting the hands the tooling she's using clearly defines also with what force she will set the hands so she will now adjust the tooling as you saw precisely adjust it and then when she's setting the hands the force the torque is exactly defined and she cannot do anything wrong by setting it with a defined torque you will be sure also that the hands are set correctly and most important is of course that they do not touch each other when they overlap every hour so she has to be sure that uh, the small distance of a maybe a millimeter or less, is uh, guaranteed. We also see that the watchmaker has connected the tooling to set the hands with a laptop. This is how the precisely defined torque then is known, of course, because the laptop will deliver all the information to the tooling. And by doing this, you avoid any damages. And of course, you get the precision you need and want that these hands perfectly align now that's the small second she's setting. Uh, sometimes she's covering the camera, but this happens because, of course, she's not an actress, but a watchmaker, and she has to do her job. And yeah, <laughs> it's about work and not acting, and we are showing real things. So sometimes forgive us if she's covering some parts you just want to see. So next will be, we will see, and yes, you will set the hour hand. Next. And. Now you see, she's checking what I've been saying before. If these hands do touch each other, if there is enough space in between them, and Nothing else than this. We expected, of course, everything is perfect. Again, you see, she's again cleaning, checking if there is anything on it, what shouldn't be there. Doing some small, 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 tiny adjustments, but that's part of what is necessary. The case has been also delivered from Bulgari. It's a titanium case. This is a titanium Octofinissimo. The case is also manufactured by Bulgari. Not been outsourced. Uh, they do have their proper manufacturing for cases. Same applies for the dials. And we will, in another video, not in this one, show you how dials, how cases are manufactured. So you can see that they are really doing almost everything in-house. No one in the industry can do everything in-house. So the sapphire crystal that comes into the picture right now cannot be done by Bulgari. There are just a few specialized companies in Switzerland. The crowns, for instance. A crown seems to be just a little device that is on a watch, but the crown has several functions. And there are a few specialists only in Switzerland who make these crowns. And uh, even uh, big companies or big uh, Groups like uh, the Swatch Group and others depend on these guys who have these skills to do such parts. And sometimes there are delays and if a crown or if whatsoever is not delivered in time, the watch cannot be assembled and end of the day not be delivered to the markets. Next operations are fixing the dial and then preparing the ready movement to be encased in its titanium case. It is, and uh, you clearly see this, the platinum micro-rotor 
you clearly see that this is uh, the Bulgari 138 caliber we showed you yesterday. Now the back, see-through, case back. You can really like in CinemaScope see the movement. Sometimes uh, you want to wear the watch the other way around because it's so beautiful to watch. And I also explained to you yesterday that Bulgari keeps the tradition and does apply traditional surface treatment to the watches. She ah, obviously f saw something that she has to still check. This is Rodico she's using. That's a special rubber. And that rubber is absorbing grease, fat, fingerprints, dust. It's called Rodico. Well, she's putting the case back again as she did before, triple checking, double checking, triple checking everything. And once she's happy, then she will continue. Now, the gasket. Still, you have to know that even though these Finissimo watches look like you couldn't wear them on a daily basis because they are so fragile, so thin, so delicate, they aren't. It's a watch you can use on a daily basis without any problems. The watch is waterproof. Of course, it's not a diver. Bulgari has divers if you want, but this is more the elegant watch. But still, it's, yeah, it's waterproof and guaranteed that on a daily use, normal daily base use, no problems will occur. Now, taking out of her box is the front side. Sapphire crystal, once again, the sapphire crystal is, of course, not done by Bulgari, as uh, all the industry has to buy those sapphire crystals from some specialists in, the, in, the, in Switzerland. Again, checking if everything is as it should be. Now she will again launch the same process as we saw before. Cleaning, 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 and then checking if there is anything left from dust to fingerprints. Without uh, doing this, the watch couldn't leave the workshops. And end of the day, yes, there will be someone else checking what she has been already doing. There will be a final control, of course. So before the watch is ready to be shipped to the markets or to a retailer, someone will do a final check. That's necessary because errors can happen. Nobody's perfect. The only thing you don't want is that a watch that is having a problem is sold. That shouldn't happen and normally it doesn't happen. So now she inserted the crown. Looks nice. I can see it from distance. Clearly octofinissimo in a titanium case. Looking gorgeous. Now it's about screws. And, 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 and the most fascinating thing is these screws are tiny. I do have incredible respect of the people working here. The concentration on working with these extra, extra small parts is yeah, heads off. Even if, of course, it's their job, so of course they should know what they're doing, but uh, still, it's not easy. Huh? She's now doing a first check if the watch is waterproof. What will happen, there's no water applied, but the machine will suck out the air, create a vacuum, and then know if the case is waterproof or not. Free bars is being tested. It's all about checking if the watch fulfills what it should do. Well, I do see two green lights. Test one, test two is okay. So it seems that <laughs> this Octofinissimo passed the test. I didn't expect anything than this, but uh, yeah, checking is checking. Some last, last checks. Mm -hmm. Most important is that there is no dust. If you would see any dust or anything else on the dial, that would be horrifying. Imagine you buy such a watch and you do see fingerprints or dust. She's ready, she's done. Thank you very much, merci.
Last step for the moment is that the bracelet has to be put on the case. It's a colleague doing this while the watchmaker we saw before is already assembling the next case. So the work is a little bit shared, shared in the sense that they do the entire process, but not the same work all day. That makes sense, of course, it will get boring. And now she's assembling, she has been using a, its appropriate tooling for doing this. The spring bar has to be pressed together, then inserted into a broad, close to the little holes in the locks, and then, yeah, it is done. Very easy process. And you see now on your screen is the Octo Finissimo in a titanium case, finally completely assembled, including its bracelet. So after the encasing is done, of course, the watch is again being checked for water tightness. So a waterproof check is done here. Then you do have another check of the accuracy of the watch. We learned yesterday that the watchmaker is, of course, regulating the movement. But once the movement is being encased, it is again checked that the tolerances are also guaranteed. Some fine adjustments might have to be done. And yeah, this is what these gentlemen you just see on your screen are doing before a watch is ready to be delivered. Yeah, watch advisors spent two entire days at Bulgari to discover movement, production and of course the encasing of the ready manufactured movements that are manufactured in the Vallée de Joux in Le Sentier here at the Bulgari headquarter. And we just saw how the Calibre 138 has been encased in a titanium case of the Octo Finissimo. Talking about cases, bracelets, you have been seeing those in the video. We will come back to Bulgari later this year and we will be among the first ones to discover the new manufacturing site in Sagne Léger, also in the Swiss Jura, where Bulgaria is manufacturing its dials, its cases, its bracelets. So it's really a incredible story what they have been putting together. And besides uh, some components everybody needs to buy or everybody is outsourcing, they do almost everything in-house. And um, we have to say much respect, chapeau or hats off to them. I hope you liked what you saw. It is a watch, if you have never tried one and if you are saying to yourself, now I've seen. It is a watch I like in terms of what it is, thin and light and particular design. Please put the watch once on your wrist. Go to a Bulgari retailer or to a Bulgari boutique, put it on your wrist, feel it and you will love it. I'm not uh, selling it to you, but I just recommend you do it because you will love it. It is so perfectly melting with your wrist that you don't feel it anymore. Bulgari Octo Finissimo. See you back then um, in a couple of weeks when we are filming the uh, production of cases uh, of the dials and the bracelets. Until then, all the best to you and thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye from Neuchâtel and see you soon.